Hello there, aspiring notary publics. Welcome back to Tiger Toledo's Notary Cash Flow Channel. Today, we have a special treat for all you busy bees out there. If you're a notary public juggling a hectic schedule, you've come to the right place. In this video, we'll be sharing some effective hacks that will help you make the most of your valuable time. Let's dive right in. As long as it's not a surprise to mom, when you show up, you're like, what is this notary doing here? Yeah, I, like when when there's situations that may seem a little bit like super urgent, I tell them I was like, hey, when our notary show up, it's not going to be a surprise to your mom that a notary is here. Right. Because we are my 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 notaries will get really, really, you know, feel feel uneasy doing a notarization and they will turn around and walk out. Okay. Yeah. I'm thinking, yeah, because so let's say you quote that person at a really high rate. Do they all of a sudden, if there's something um, unsure about it, uncertain about it, do they then back out? I'm thinking about this from the be from the point of view of a customer. Like I'm going to go to, I'm trying to go to UPS store first. If I'm doing something shady, I'm going to try to go to UPS store first. That's the cheapest, but I call professionals. And then right, they for a will, they couldn't they couldn't get it at a UPS store anyway, right? Yeah. That wouldn't stop them from trying though. Yeah, but but you know they're gonna wind up co contacting you unless you live in Colorado. If, uh, the, supposedly Colorado, they do it all in UPS store. Oh, but shit. but for a will, again, you know, there may be a sense of urgency because there is something that's about to go and he you know, maybe they do see an Aretha Franklin situation happen and be like, oh, my God, he has all of this assets he has and never, ever got a will done. We need to spring into action right now. Because the doctor gave them one week to live. Yeah, that could cause the urgency right there. OK, cool, cool. That makes sense. Did that answer the question, bro? Yeah. I always thought that the equalizer would be, always be the price, but that's not necessarily the case. Sometimes, uh, you know, they may not, they may take a while, but I always thought if I charge them more, then that would, that would, you know, cool them off a little bit, you know, like slow you down a little bit because they would think about that. But it needed done, it needed done. Now, I've done that for divorce, divorce couples. I, I will mark up because I don't like doing divorce um, <laughs> divorce notarizations because it's, it, it could get real ugly on that spot. You know, like both parties are there and they're they're bickering at each other and they're calling each other name and cursing. And I'm like, uh, I'm not here for that. So I double the price on them. And I was like, y'all going to have to think about this divorce again. Y'all going to have to like... <laughs> Do you really want this? Because now I'm going to charge you double. And if I have to sit through all of this, you cheated on me. Well, you slept with the the bag boy at the supermarket. I, like, I don't want to be in that mix. So therefore, if I'm going to be in that mix, I'm going to make sure that it's worth it for me. <laughs> it's also cracking up. <laughs> yeah right they're both yelling at the son like they this is both y'all son but they don't agree with how they yelling at it, the son like <laughs> what oh, you yeah. guys are both yelling <laughs> like, all right sign that's, that's right Brandy. exactly yeah. how bad do you want to get out of this divorce for real i make them here's question my price here's yep. my price how bad do you want to get out of it 100 percent. i have them think twice about you like you know what you ain't that eh, i think i could look past the bag boy I can look past him. I understand he came from college. You ain't got to have no long time, long distance fling anyway. So, yeah, that notary had me rethinking the whole divorce thing. Like, yes, I did. I did a good deed for the day. That's how I look. <laughs> I got the couple to stay together for another week. OK, so we're going to create a power of attorney document for New York. and. 
this is a great reference tool as well because it's going to tell you what is what is um required in your your respective state it, it's teaching you the laws of it so because they, they have uh, like i said i have a 100 success rate with these guys no document that we have ever did the liaison stuff basically data entry that's all i i was doing for for this i'm just asking your name i'm typing your name i ask for your last name i type in your last name you give me your address i type it in i'm not giving you no legal advice at all this is 100 data entry you guys very lucrative part of the business so in this situation um who is the power of attorney for it's going to be for beyonce right Knowles address we're going to say 1313 mockingbird lane and go to next and keep in mind this is for new york you guys so who will be receiving the power the powers to act on the principal's behalf who did we say you guys jay-z right carter same address I will just use that. Okay, so we'll hit next. Now, by the way, I, this is what I would be asking the customer if I had them on the phone. Now, in the state of New York, see, this is great. This I, I already see the, the difference between the states right here. In the state of New York, you can actually elect a second agent. So... Tulsa, your sister that wants to be a part of it as well, you can actually create a new power of attorney that will have your sister be on the, the document as well. See, in the state of Illinois, you can only have one. There is no second agent in the state of Illinois because there used to be so much conflict in the courts that they got rid of it. So that's why I say every state is different. So in the state of New York, you can actually elect a second agent. So this one would be where Solange would be, right? But we'll just put no. Now, this is where we would have the successor. Will there be any successor agents? And see, in New York is different as well. It says you can select one or two two successor agents. Illinois, you can only pick one. So the successor agent would be if something happened to Jay-Z, here, uh, Solange would kick in. Her power, she would, she would take power from that. It's, it's like football. They pass the ball back and the person runs with it. So in this situation, we'll say Solange. Same address. So this says succession rules. Would you like to make succession rules? Now, here's why I love eForm so much is because it gives you a description right here at the bottom. So in case you guys can't see, it says succession rules describe under what circumstances circumstance the successor agent may act on behalf of the principal. For example, the successor agent may act in if the agent is not able to reach to be reached within 24 hours. So immediately if jay-z is busy and they can't reach him for 24 hours boom solange will kick in that's kind of dope that's kind of dope right so so, so that so that would uh, be in my case if something happened to my dad 
Mm -hmm. And I'm down here in Florida and Mm -hmm. the documents needed or they needed an answer real quick. And my sister was on it. She would be able to, to, to do that if I'm not there. Or would it be only, only if, um, um, vocally, if I'm, if if I'm no answer whatsoever, then she would, then that person would be able to take over. Yeah. I I would, I, because the successor thing would be like, it's a, it's like a relief pitcher. It's like a, like a backup, right? Mm -hmm. Now versus the second agent, this person is making decisions with you. So being that you're in Florida and then your sister is in New York and you're unable to make, she can make decisions right there on the spot. She doesn't have to wait 24 hours. Right. Or they don't have to wait for until I get to New York. Exactly. Now the successor would be like, they, you're incognito. She can't find you. It's just like, all right, we got, we got to do something. Okay. So I, I have another question. So sure. is it safe to say that a POA is something similar to a will? Because that's what it sounds like. Now, so a POA is for when the person is alive. Okay. The will, the and will, the will comes in back. Exactly. Yep. Okay. All right. I understand. Now. Thank you. Great, great questions. Keep bring them in too, because this is this is helping everybody that's on here. So, matter of fact, Tulsa, come back online. We're going to go over this with you. You're okay. going to be the client and I'm going to be the person that's actually filling this out. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, would you like to make any succession rules for your sister? Uh, what do you mean? I'm going to say exactly what I would say. Mm-hmm. Sure. <laughs> well, succession rules means that it describes under what circumstance the successor agent, which would be your sister, may act on behalf of the principal. For example, the successor agent, your sister, may act if the agent is not able to be reached within 24 hours. Okay, yes. Okay. So this is probably going to ask for some notes. So what I would need you to do, see, once they find out that there's notes that need to be added, they usually back out. Okay, so put no. <laughs> right. So, but in case they do have succession rules, I'll say, all right, Tulsa, what I need you to do, I need you to type out whatever rules that you have, and I need you to email it back to me. Okay. And what we're going to do, we're just going to copy and paste. We're not going to take any dictation. That's right. not what we do because it's too, this, this document is too important for that. So you okay. type out whatever you want to do. Right. And then we'll just copy and paste it into the power of attorney document. And that way it'll be word for word. Absolutely. Word, what they said. And it releases okay. you from all liability. Right. Because now you have a paper trail of that email. You have the correspondence. You have the date and time stamp on there. You're in the right. clear. Right. Um, okay. So usually they'll say no once they that happens, right? They're like, no, nah, no, nah, I don't want to do all that. Don't worry about it. Um. So next would be, do you agree to initial the bracket at each separate authority or initial beside? Explain, please. Sure. And I'll zoom in for you guys. Once the form is generated, 16 different power of attorneys will appear on your finalized form. Each power will represent several ways in which the agent can act on your behalf. Simply initial besides the power you wish to grant, such as those with respect to real estate transactions or banking transactions. If you wish to authorize broad powers, you may initial only besides the P bracket. Okay, so initial. I would initiate. So how would I initiate for everything? Like if oh. I wanted that. Right. So they actually, it's, it's really a trick question because they only give you one option. Right. So you either agree or we would have to stop doing the documents entirely. Okay. I agree. So by me agreeing, it's just saying that it's going to initiate everything. 
Is that correct? No, it, it's actually going to give you a, a spot for you to in initial. Okay. And you'll, you'll actually see the full document once it's completed. Okay. Would you like, would you like your agent to make gifts? No. Would you like the agent to be compensated for their work? You remember I was talking about earlier that sometimes you may have, some of the family members may come out of pocket, but then they recoup it once the power of attorney gets it done. So they'll get their money back. Okay, so then that that question would be that answer would be yes, right? That's only so if, if they, they, they want to get money they, back. Yeah, that's if they want to recoup some money. Most okay. most offsprings don't care about that. Okay, so no. Are there any additional limitations or provisions that you would like to add? No. Will the principal like to have a monitor? So this is completely different from Illinois and other states that I've seen, like in Florida. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen anything like called a monitor. So a monitor is a person that has the authority to audit the agent in order to monitor each of the financial transactions that they authorize. So basically, okay. you're putting somebody all over the... Like if they're moving that much <laughs> assets and money, I guess they have somebody that can audit them, like an accountant. Wow. Okay, so that would be somebody ordering me? Yeah. Since I'm getting power of attorneys and somebody would be ordering me, right? Right, because you would be the agent and your father would be the principal. So it's basically asking, would your father like to have a monitor? Yeah, because he's like that. <laughs> okay, so at this part, he really is. So at this part, the monitor, you would have to give all the information of the monitor. Okay, so we gonna play, say no, but yeah, right. But but, but this is good to see, right? <laughs> yes, that it you is. can actually put somebody in place for that. Yes. And then again, this is another trick question, right? The principal understands that this power of attorney must be signed with a notary public and two witnesses. Do yes. you acknowledge that? Yes. Boom. Done. I better. I'm a notary, right? <laughs> right. So, so yeah. this is what the power of attorney will look like. Okay. So in the case of um, someone doing a power of attorney, does that mean that to uh, this person would have to have um, I, if I would have to have me, myself as the notary and two witnesses. Yes. Okay. okay. All right. Right. So in your situation, because you are, you would be the agent, you would be the primary agent, right? right. Your sister would be the successor. Your father is the principal. Now there's three other people that has to be there. It's going right. to be the notary and two external witnesses. Okay. So it's going to be a packed room. It's going to be six people there. Right. So either I can have, oh, so that explains that question I have on something else. So mm -hmm. um, because I, I do run, so, and it asks that question, how many people will be in the room? So, mm. so now I know why it asks that question. But mm -hmm. um, um, so... I would have to, as the agent, provide the, the um the two witnesses, or does the the notary provide the two witnesses? Now that's up to you guys, right? Oh, so okay. if the if the principal or the family, right, can provide two witnesses that are non-related, not married into the family, oh yeah, rock out. Okay. But if they're unable, and a lot of times. They don't want people in their business like that, right? Right. I don't want to go next door and have Wanda come over. And now she's like, what are you guys signing? What's Oh, <laughs> I didn't know you had this in your house. Oh, let me borrow that. After, they don't want that. Right. So, so that would be good on our part because then that's extra money. 100%. Okay. 
So each witness, like for me and my organization, we charge $89.97 per witness. So that's $176 right there for two for me to provide two witnesses. And that's not even counting the traveling notary service, which is $178. Or the documents that need to be notarized. It, right? right. I mean, the power of attorney. Right. And, it, okay. and if you're printing out the documents, you can actually charge tax on there because it's a tangible good now. Wow. That's awesome. So this is what the power of attorney looks like now. So everywhere you see this blank line at, this is where mm -hmm. your father would actually uh, initial. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Real estate cattle and good transactions, bond, surety bonds, shares and commodity transactions. You guys see how much money is being passed across the table? Banking transactions, business operating transactions, insurance, uh, estate claims, uh, claims and litigation, like you can appear in court on the person's behalf now. Wow. Um, so the, your pops will be putting initials next to all of this, right? Or Beyonce would be putting initials next to all of this. Okay. Um, they're, they're also, you would also oversee government benefits, um, uh, military service, all kinds of stuff like that, healthcare and billing, retirement benefit packages. Like you are over all of this. Okay, what if he owe money? <laughs> I'm over that too. I got to pay. <laughs> as far as what? Say that again. What if he owe people money? What if, you know. Yeah, you're not assuming his debt. Yeah, you're oh, not okay. assuming his debt. Right, you're just, right. Yeah, you're just overseeing and, and, and you're a liaison. You're a concierge as far as it's concerned. The money okay. comes to you and then you disperse it to where it needs to go. Okay. Because okay. he's unable to do so. If he has a lawsuit going on with Johnson and Johnson because their baby powder is causing cancer, you can appear in court on his behalf and represent him. Okay. You can sign off on, like, like you literally can sell the house that he's living in while he's in there. There's family. There, there are some shiesty family members that have done yeah, that. Yeah, you Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So there would initial next to all of those blank lines, right? And then right here, in witness whereof. Yeah, that's the acknowledgement. Exactly. Right. So now mm -hmm. he's gonna sign there, or Beyonce would sign here. It's the state of Illinois, County of Cook, or or, or County of Kings, right? Right. And then you go put the date month 2023 personally appeared you're going to put their name there and then you're going to put your signature here and then stamp yes then witness number one date print name address city zip sig uh witness number two date print address city zip and that is it that should be it Wow. Um, and I guess they asked for another acknowledgement form right here. Same thing that was above. Right. Right. You fill that out. Is then, that one, what does that one say? This one's for the success. Is it the same? Is it the same um wording as the other one? I'm so still learning, but I think that one sure. one is an acknowledgement. Right, so the first one is for the principal. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, let me make sure. Yeah, so this one is for the principal right here, right? Right. And then the next one is going to be for the agent. Okay. Right here. That's, what, okay. that's what's nice about e-forms is that they'll highlight it for you. Right. And then you fill that part out. Then you have the successor part, Right because this is gonna be an active party on that pile of attorney. So now the successor would go here and then you would do another acknowledgement form for that. So successor. that's three stamps. 
Yes. I need to do some POAs. <laughs> yeah. I need to do some power of attorneys. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's very lucrative. And that's it. Look at this. Look. Six it. pages. That's it. Six pages. You're in and out wow. at that place in like 10 minutes. Wow. Jazz, you just did a power of attorney not too long ago. How long did it take you? Fifteen minutes. What tech? You you did a power of attorney and it took you about fifteen minutes. Yeah, about fifteen minutes total. Jazz, you you've done power of attorneys. How long does it take you to do a power of attorney? She might be busy. Average power of attorney takes about 15, 20 minutes. Being that New York only has six pages, this is going to be less than that. It's going to be half. 10 to 15 minutes is about 15 pages long. Most power of attorney documents are about 13 to 15 pages. So I want you to look at this for a second. You're going to make 100 minimum, minimum $178 or $200 for a power of attorney document to get executed for six pages. Doesn't that corrupt everything when it comes to loan signings for you now? Doesn't, doesn't it make you look at loan signings a little bit differently now and say, hold up. I printed out 350 pages. I went over to the client's house and I spent 45 minutes to an hour. Then after that, I had to scan all 350 pages and then take those documents to FedEx to be overnight. And I only charged $150. Do you guys see how it's like disproportionate? Yeah, when you put it that way. <laughs> it, it makes you it, it makes you sick to your stomach, right? Yes, I agree. Wow. It really is a different perspective. That's incredible. Yeah. Not when, only that, you said uh -huh. that people are charging $50, $60 oh. to do a power of attorney. And then you had three notary stamps on it. I, so do the math because the math is not adding up. Exactly. It, it's not adding up. And you, I, I think you're right. After this, I'm glad I'm just now learning because I probably would have been one of them that was charging $50 too, you know, if I never would have been in here to learn it, you know, a different way. And here's the, here's the crazy thing. There are notaries out there that's that charge $50 for a loan closing. With all of that that I just mentioned, they charge $50 to $65 for all of that work. It hurts my heart to see that happen. It's painful to see when they charge $65 and they had to do all that work while me, tech, and jazz are charging. $150, $200 for affidavit and, and, and three signatures. And we have the rest of the day. They would literally have to run three appointments like that to make what we made on one transaction. And that is what I call the Jim Jones Kool-Aid. Because they're not exposing well, they, they may not know. The, the, the coaches and gurus may not know this these type of strategies. They may not have dived deep into understanding the whole intricacies of, of, of power of attorneys, right? You guys are here. You're at a master class where you're completely separating yourself from all the other notaries out there. So when you start posting up 
your transaction sizes and people are like, how are you getting that? Like, that doesn't make sense. How are you getting that? Snapdoc doesn't offer that to me. Notary Go doesn't offer those prices to me. Where, how are you getting these prices? You move different. Any questions, any comments? Yeah, it really comes, that time, that biggest advantage is that time too. You get three times what they would have gotten, but it's in comparison, but the two and a half, three hours that you dedicated to doing that loan closing just for $65 versus the, you know, 175, 219 that you got for the power of attorney given the reduced amount of time you still have the rest of the day, like you said, the money is, it can come up and now, it can change with the situation, it can vary, but the time, man, that doesn't change. That time, it <laughs> still the same. And again, you guys, six pages, six. This is how you learn. Thanks for watching. I hope you got a lot from it. Don't forget to click the link below for my special discounted price.